Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome back class. So we can start with the percutan akhir uh, SES 2020 semester 2. Alright, so this we got to with the physics. Uh, the words P H Y S I C S is physics. Okay, so we can learn a bit about the all the topic that we have learned. So the first topic we can look at is the mechanical wave. So these are type of question that you can have. Given a progressive wave equation, uh, that is uh, y equals to zero point two sine, in a bracket of two hundred pi t minus pi x over fifteen. So the question where is t is in second and both x and y in c m. So we're given now the unit. That is for the y is in cm. So we hmm. yes, hmm. yeah. Uh, okay. So the question asks to find the direction of the wave propagate, the amplitude, the angular frequency, the wave number, the wavelength, the frequency that based on the equation, and also the speed of the wave the period that is the cycle of the uh, what it calls that uh, the equation itself and then last but not least we're going to look at the displacement of the wave when given the equation at x as 22.5 centimeter and the time taken between that is 18.9 second for the question you can answer part by part that is based on the equation that being given that is before y equals to 0 0.2 sine 200 pi t that is minus with pi x over 15 so we'll closely look at this the first thing we have to find is the direction of the wave propagate so for the wave propagation we have to look at this one it shows that is minus so it means that the direction is to the right Okay, so from the equation itself, we can have the amplitude that is directly at 0 0.2 centimeter. And again, please class, uh, the unit you have to know, the unit you have to know, you have to put it without, without the unit, you will lose your marks. And then we can have to find the angular frequency. Another word for angular frequencies is angular velocity or speed all right you can use both of it but the most important part the way we're going to get it is from the equation so right now from the equation so we have 200 pi it must be 200 pi leave the t out all right and again the unit for angular frequency or angular velocity is radian per second Alright, then we have to find the wave number that the wave number is exactly at the last part of the equation that is pi over 15 and left over the x. Kita tanda x tu. Alright, so the answer for the wave number is pi over 15 and the unit is per centimeter. This regard with the wavelength. Alright, wavelength. Alright, for the next slide, we have the equation back, but we have to find the wavelength. So basically, the wavelength is from the wave number, that is pi over 15. So, regardless with the equation of the wave number is 2 pi over lambda. Alright, then we'll place back inside the k value where the k now is pi over 15 just write back pi over 15 and then substitute the wave number equation to the k here so we can cut it simplify it we can level out the lambda will be here and then 15 times 2 we're going to have the wavelength equals to 30 cm remember the unit look back the question make sure what you need been using all right all right for this slide again from the equation we need to find the frequency so as we learn the frequency is from the angular 
frequency 200 pi so here are the formulae right where w here represent as the omega that is the angular frequency is equal to 2 pi f so we need to pi to find the value of the uh, frequency at this point you just replace 200 pi back to the omega here that is the angular frequency which equals to the equation from this one okay the put back and then we have 2 pi f gonna simplify throw away the pi and also the number 2 can be divided by 200 we're gonna left out with the frequency that is 100 hertz all right for the frequency the unit is hertz another unit is per second again per second all right the next slide we're gonna look at the speed of the wave where to find it well the most important part for to find the speed of the wave that is from the equation the speed equals to f lambda f represent for the frequency that we have found before and also the wavelength all right so that is from the wave number for the wavelength so just substitute back the value that we get before this the frequency is 100 and the pi uh, the lambda is 30 so we're gonna have 3000 centimeter per second frequency represent the unit of per second right for the next slide the question is about period to find the value of the period so the period here represent as this cycle or one complete cycle all right so to find it is from the frequency just re replace back the value of the frequency we can find the period the frequency that we have is 100 and we have the period value that is 0 0.01 second so means that a complete cycle will be in 0 0.01 second okay for the next slide here they are given the value of x and also the value of t so we just replace back inside the equation for the t value and so the x value so what we're gonna have is that uh, the equation put back everything substitute everything back inside the 22.5 inside here so make sure the units are the same uh, the units are the same so 18.9 is for the time taken right so we're gonna have the answer oh before that so at this point better watch out where you have to use radiant mode right mode for your calculator it's not degree so most of the students done a mistakes based on the calculation all right so gonna have the 0 0.2 centimeter you can go ahead and try from your calculator okay class so so now we're going to move on for the third chapter that is regarding with the devices called the resistor so from the chapter of resistor we have learned about the ohm's law and the parallel series in a circuit so it's quite important for you to remember what is about parallel and series so where it is that, that is connect between them and what is that the current and the potential different place potential difference is the voltage here that is potential difference and in fact through the resistor here the two ohm three ohms and so on it has it is has the current that's flow through it and in fact potential difference at this mo uh, this moment at the two ohms and four ohms are not the same but if we combine the potential difference or the voltage at 2 ohm, 1 ohm, 3 ohms and 4 ohms, we're going to get back the exact value or the origin value that is 20 volt. These are the origin, 20 volt. But we combine back the calculation that is for the 2 ohms, 4 ohms, 1 ohm and 3 ohm, we could have back the value of 20 volt. So the question here regarding with the figure here, 
uh, arrangement of resistor connected to a 20 volt battery so these are the power supply you can see over that okay so we have to find calculate the effective resistance so it means that combination of the resistance and that the current flow through is not each through the circuit only okay? through the circuit that means that after you combine everything you have to find only the current that's flow through the circuit all right we can look after this and then last but not least we can look at the potential difference on each resistor uh, that's the question that we have to look and in fact this type of question if you do it multiple times we can understand a bit about it all right okay for the next slide uh, what can look at the effective resistance uh, uh, for the circuit so from the circuit itself the first thing you have to look at the uh, your right side you can look right here because the power, uh, power supplies at the left side so combination of 1 ohm and 3 ohms okay the first step we have to do all right then we have 3 over 4 ohms combination of both of these and you can see now it is in parallel so in parallel is that it will be 1 over R that is the effective resistor that we can find from these two uh, resistor all right so after the combination we can look at the second steps that is to combine it with the 2 ohms and 4 ohms so right here from the circuit itself we are going to sum all the resistor that is based on the series concept where the series concept is quite simple calculation eh? because you have to sum everything 0 over 75 is 3 over 4 plus 4 plus 2 so last but not least after the combination we're going to have a single resistor in a circuit exactly just like this that is uh, 6.75 ohm right uh, this is our effective resistance value after all the combination from the four of the resistors all right so the next slide is about to find the current that through the resistor it's not each the question seems to be lack of it so the current start to flow from positive uh, pole all right from the battery throughout the circuit through the single resistor or the sum of the resistor that we have done 6.75 and flow back to the negative pole of the battery or the power supply so using the ohm's law v that is equals to ir where the i is for the current and we know that this v is the voltage and this is the r that is 6.75 ohm but otherwise i have put it 27 over 41 actually all right so times the voltage that is 20 the current that we're going to have is 2.96 amps so means that the current that flows from the positive pole of the battery throughout the circle until it came back to the negative pole it drove 2.96 uh, m all right uh, so that is for find the current so uh, we want to look for the potential different potential different on each of the resistor uh, this is each of the resistor the problem is that for resistor you have to know the uh, parallel and series so right now we have the parallel here the value of parallel are the same for 1 ohm and 3 ohm the voltage value it is the same for 1 ohm and 3 ohm all right that's the voltage for the current that flow through 1 ohm and 3 ohm they are not the same because the current that came out from 20 volt uh, we spoke before this it is 2.96 amp when it comes to 2 ohm is it is still the same current 
still the same current but the value of the voltage is not 20 volt it will be lesser because of all the resistor that is inside here but the current that we come to the point at here when it's going to be separate the current going to be separate so the value is not 2.96 anymore but start to flow to all over and come back to this point and come to here the value of the current are the same for 2.96 s2 ohm so come to 4 ohm and again the value of the voltage or the potential difference at 4 ohm is not 20 volt it will be less so when combine the voltage or potential difference at 2 ohm and also 4 ohm we will then deduct it with the 20 volt so 20 volt ni all right so you're going to deduct at voltage 2 ohm and 4 ohm those voltage that's been left over it is the value for 1 ohm and 3 ohm so we are going to look at it now for the first step is that we are going to find the potential difference or the voltage across 2 ohm resistor alright so we will have 5.92 volt and it's not 20 volt means that it will be lesser and then for the second part we are going to find the value of the potential difference at 4 ohm what we will have is that 11.84 volt and it is less than 20 volt then we are going to sum or combine the value of 5.92 volt with 11.84 volt to find the voltage at 1 ohm and 3 ohm as it is in parallel so the third step the 1 ohm value of voltage or potential difference are the same at 3 ohm resistor so the combination of 4 V24 or 2 ohms and 4 ohms here right uh, been deducted from the original value that is 20 volt so we are going to have 2.24 volt that refer to the 1 ohm and 3 ohm so that is for the value of all of this each of the resistor so the next question we look at is what is the resistance of a copper wire 0 0.5 millimeter in diameter look the word properly from the question says diameter and it has the length that is 20 meter so resistivity for a copper we given here is 1.7 times power negative 8 ohm meter so now this is in millimeter everything is in meter so you have to change it into meter okay these are the equation to find the value of the resistance so the row here represent for the resistivity of the copper the L stands for the length and A is the area so from this area as we look at the copper wire it is pi r squared the r stands for the radius so here been given the diameter so we divide by 2 uh, divide by 2 this is r square class r square is not 2r r square so many of the students make mistakes that says the r is diameter it's not a diameter it is a radius so we divide by 2 we have 0 0.25 and then the unit should be changed into the standard value based on all the 
units from uh, the question it will be in meter so substitute everything inside back so we have the answer at the end is 4.32 times power of minus 4 minus 4 ini besar tau sebab apa ok the unit should be in ohms again I stress now the value of the uh, answer should have the right unit it should be the right unit that is ohm Okay, next we're going to look at the chapter 4 that is for the capacitor and we know that capacitor store charge it store charge that you have to know and again in the circuit itself for resistor I will present here so the four rep, uh, resistor here is store charge okay the current the voltage exactly the same principle as the resistor parallel and series still the same all right the question here determine the effective capacitance of the configuration show in the figure and find the charge of each of the capacitor in the power supply if the power supply is 20 volts so right now the power supply is from a to b positive to negative uh, a to b 20 volt that is for the question Alright, to find effective capacitor, we can look back at the circuit. The first thing is that we have to determine which one we have to start. Or we can say settle first. Alright, regarding from this one, we have 15 ohms and 3 ohms that is in series. Alright, so after that, we can have the 6 microfarad. Alright, that is with them uh, in parallel. So by using uh, okay the right what I call the solution one over C equals to one over fifteen plus one over three as you can see right now even though it is in series but the calculation is not the same as the resistor okay the principle of resistor calculation so we put back we're gonna have two point five micro farad so it will be single here All right, you can see right now two point five micro farad this will be two point five micro farad and then this is parallel with 6 microfarad so move on combine both of this one that is in parallel using the right calculation steps 5.2 or 2.5 yeah? plus 6 we're gonna have 6 over 5 over 2 microfarad or we can say 7.5 microfarad so it will be just like this exactly now from here we are gonna find the single capacitor only in the circuit that's combined it together 7.5 and also 20 microfarad that is in series all right so when we see 2 over 17 plus 1 over 20 we will have last but not least the value is 5.45 microfarad in a single capacitor where this here is A, this is B showing that the power supply of 20 volt that we can calculate after this so now we have to find charge at each of the capacitor if the power supply is 20 volt all right so firstly we're going to find the charge overall for the circuit so when we have calculated the value of the capacitor at this point is 5.45 micro and being given is that the value of the power supply is 20 volt based on the equation we just substitute back every value that been given and the total charge for this circuit is 109 micro coulomb plus again i'm stressing out at the 
unit so next we are going to find the charge from the overall so uh, circuit or the original circuit that consists of four capacitor so firstly we have to find the charge okay for the 15 3 and 6 that can charge you do okay so right now the potential difference at this moment okay at this moment is 14.5 volt all right 14.5 volt so means that the potential difference at 20 microfarad that is 20 volt been given 20 volt just now minus with 14.5 that is the voltage for 20 microfarad our potential difference at 20 microfarad so the potential difference for 15 and 3 are 14.5 volt meanwhile for 6 microfarad are the same <laughs> 14.5 volt because it is in parallel so the next step is finding the value of charge at 6 microfarad so 14.5 volt and also the capacitor that is 6 micro with time is we're going to have 87 micro coulomb these are the value of charge that is at 6 micro farad now here the voltage at 15 micro farad can combine with 3 microfarad is 14.5 all right so we're going to find the charge for each of the capacitor so the third steps as we look here the charge at 15 and 3 are the same uh, 15 and 3 are the same so 2.5 micro times 14.5 we will have 36.25 micro coulomb all right for the capacitor for each of the capacitor all right so to find a 20 microfarad you can use the equation of q equals to cv i would like you to do it to find the charge at 20 microfarad and you can discuss with your lecturer right if there's a no problem for you all right okay for the next slide is about chapter six uh, chapter five that is magnetism all right so given out a long sunlight with 15 tenths per centimeter has small loop of area 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 square two centimeter right place inside the solenoid normal to the axis if the current carried by the solenoid change steadily from 2m to 4m in 0 0.1 second why is the induced emf in the loop while the current is charging so here the other changes as you can see right now okay the current has the changes uh, these are the area the area is two centimeter square all right this is wrong all right we can look this is per centimeter tons per centimeter look carefully at the question so these are the solenoid that have been used as you can see these are the loops right these are the loops and these are the magnetic I call this one as the magnetic 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 car magnetic field the lines okay so number of turns of the sonar will be given in per centimeter we have to change to 
meter so we 1500 turns per meter and then number of turns per unit length is 1500 turns per meter and then the coil a small loop of uh, Okay, number coil, the area, 2 cm square just now, I'm seeing there was a mistake down there, so these are the mistakes, so it will be square here, cm square, alright, so change to meter square, we have 2 to the power of negative 4 meter square, and then the changes of the current, that is from the initial to the final, again, the final is 4, so 4 minus with 2, we're going to have 2 amps. Alright, the time taken for the changes for the current is around 0 0.1 second. So all of this we are going to substitute from a simple equation that is d flux over dt. This is flux. So the flux is going to change to BA. But the changes here is not the area or definitely is not the uh, magnetic field. Okay, but the changes is at the current. So the B here, let it fill B using this equation mu naught n number per uh, turns per uh, centimeter or meter, and then I is current. the changes is current. So we're gonna replace inside the equation, all right? From B is here, so the changes is I. A doesn't change here. Uh, A is still the same, and T is based on the time taken ataupun dalam bahasa lain rate change alright so still back inside everything All right, make sure the correct unit will have 7.54 times power negative 6 volt ok 7.5 uh, 7.54 times power negative 6 volt uh, that is the answer for the question okay next we're going to look at another a question that is related to the magnetic field topics right. so given a 0 0.2 straight wire loop moving horizontally to the right at 12 meter per second alright so now it is moving to the right uh, uniform magnetic field lines of 0 0.8 tesla directed into the pitch the induced current in the wire is 3 m determine the resistance of the straight wire s-t-r-i-s-t-a uh, using the equation e EMF equals to current times with the resistor so to pull it back everything the EMF here change to B L V sine theta where the V is for the speed L is for the length and B is for the magnetic field I stands for the current that is 3 m substitute back inside and sine theta is 90 because the horizontal theta right says alright 90 degrees will be 1 so step back we're going to have 0 0.064 ohm it's quite simple just make sure you punch your calculator correctly alright next this is optical this is based when you look at the mirror and also the lens that we have learned before this. So the question has to be given, a vertical object is placed in front of spherical mirror. Mirror. And the linear magnification of the image is 3. It says 3 is more than 1. Okay, the image, what we call that, pembesaran dia lebih besar daripada 1. Ini adalah 3 besar sangat. So, if an upright image is formed 30 cm from the center of the mirror, we have state the type of spherical mirror being used. 
sketch a re diagram calculate the distance out of object from the pole of the mirror and then find the focal length of the mirror so be given here the image and also the 30 centimeter of full, um, image that we form and in video lah all right firstly state the type of spherical mirror when we have a huge image in mirror from the mirror means that it has to be concave mirror convex the image is smaller compared to the concave all right so it will be concave mirror and exactly when you sketch a ray diagram the object must be in front of the focal point these are the mirror these are the curvature these are the focal point and this will be the object where it will represent at the back of the mirror the image Okay, next, calculate the distance of the object from the pole of the mirror. Alright, by using the equation that is the magnification equals to minus V, that is the image distance divided by the object distance. As we know, the value of the magnification is 3. Meanwhile, the image that being formed is virtual when it's more than one means that it's big big means virtual so we must put minus in front of it the minus and minus will be cancelled out we're gonna have the value of the object distance is 10 centimeter that is how we determine the value of the object distance next we are going to find the focal length of the mirror this is mirror class all right so using the equation basically this being used for the lens 1 over f equals 1 over u plus 1 over v again the v value is negative because it is virtual image remember that but the f focal length for a concave mirror it cannot be negative so when we substitute z here what will we have for the focal length is 15 centimeter as you can see from the calculation itself it is positive all right now we're going to look at the lens the lens similarly to the mirror but the image that represent and also type of the lens are a little bit different okay a thin lens produce a virtual image virtual image totally going to be negative magnification more than one if the object is placed 10 centimeter from the lens calculate the focal length of the lens and then identify the type of lens so the focal length again we are using the equation a 1 over f 1 over u plus 1 over v but what being given to us is that only the length so we have to use the magnification equation all right to find a formula to substitute inside here all right so as we know the value of the magnification is 2 so bring over u here we have 2u and 2 me here we bring out here 
substitute the value of v that is minus 2u substitute inside here and we can find the value of the focal length at here because we know the u understand so we just substitute inside we have the focal length 20 centimeter you need please remind yourself you need must be there if the unit is not there means that everything is wrong identify the type of lens so again this is convex lens okay it's quite easy class all right now move on for this slide this is your last chapter or topic a non-monochromatic light source that has two wavelengths that is 450 nanometer another one is 656 nanometer all right it's used in a young double slit experiment given the slit separation slit separation means that the two point where the light gone through right from the monochromatic light so here the symbol we use is d or we can say small d that is 0 0.5 millimeter the screen and also from this slit between them are 1.2 meter so now the question determine the position of the first and second bright fringe first and second bright fringe for the two wavelength kg i don't know what is kg for but i think this is the mistakes on my typing all right so we can look at the question based on the first and second fringe for the first bright fringe the m m stands for the order the first order will be one and substitute inside the wavelength that is 450 times 1.2 the screen and double slit we just put it back 0 0.5 we're gonna have 1.08 times the power of minus 3 meter and then for the second bright fringe the order will be 2 so that's why there is 2 here m two, eh? so we're gonna have 2.16 times power of minus 3 meter this is for the first wavelength that is 450 nanometer and then for the second wavelength that is 656 nanometer normally 656 is the red light or we can say laser light all right this is comparison for the first and also the second bright fringe all right so you can see right now if you're using the longer one longer wavelength will have a higher value compared to the small lambda in sign we say that it has the highest penetration all right these are the last question in a young double slit experiment bright and dark fringe are projected on the screen when a monochromatic light falls upon a double slit distance between the screen and the double slit is two meter these are the distance between the screen double slit okay so this is d caps uh, d bizarre. The distance between the two slits is 0 0.03 millimeter if the distance between the center bright fringe center bright fringe the m or the order is equals to zero and the fourth order bright fringe is 16.4 centimeter fourth order means that 
the order m symbol m in equation will equals to 4 between them separation that is delta y 16.4 centimeter and look closely again this is in centimeter this is in millimeter this is in meter so suppose you have to use meter so let's look at the question what will happen to the interference pattern if a light of smaller wavelength is used so it says that smaller wavelength that is the symbol that is lambda calculate the wavelength of the light find the lambda calculate the separation distance between the adjacent bright fringe now this one we have to calculate a bit longer all right so this is from the equation if you want to look what will happen it will become narrow or slower so that's what happened to the pattern of the interference smaller the wavelength the narrow will be all right all right calculate the wavelength of the light by using the equation given now the separation between them is 16.4 power of minus 2 and then this is the fourth bright fringe this is uh, the lambda of the wavelength that we have to find separation of screen is 2 meter all right the d in millimeter so we have to change first all right so overall we're going to have the value of the wavelength is 615 nanometer and last but not least we have to find the separation distance between the addition bright fringe okay so this is what we have to find the lambda is being given or uh, we have from here 615 times the screen and also the double slit so the answer will be 0 0.041 meter